guys, this is Tammy from the blog Learning and Teaching with Preschoolers. Today I wanted to come to you and talk to you a little bit about pocket chart math and what that might look like in your classroom and how you can start in, um, implementing it pretty simply into your curriculum and into your daily lesson plan. So let's kind of walk you through that and let me show you what that looks like. Um, like I said, today we're going to be talking classroom. about pocket chart math and what it might look like in your classroom. So um, I kind of want to introduce to you why I started using it in my classroom. So I introduced my preschool children to pocket chart math out of necessity of finding a way to simply yet effectively introduce my young learners to early math skills. I needed to find a way that would be quick and keep my little learners attention and also needed to incorporate a hands-on way for them to practice the new skills. As I started using it in my classroom, I found that the children were taking their newfound knowledge and incorporating it into their daily um, play during our center time. So that was kind of an aha moment for me where it was like, hey, you know, this is kind of working. I need to be more intentional about how I'm introducing my little learners to the math concepts that we need to be teaching. So that was kind of how this pocket chart math um, units kind of started for me. So I wanted to kind of walk you through of what would be in a pocket chart math. So what is pocket chart math? Pocket charts are a simple way to introduce young children to new math concepts. Each lesson is only about five minutes long and it's done during large group math meeting. So I do this like as I introduce our math concepts, I'm doing it during our large group with all of my kids. It's something that's really quick, really simple. It's really engaging for them. Some kids get to come up and interact with it. And it's just, it's just a really fun way to kind of get the ball rolling in regards to um, a certain concept that I'm trying to teach. And it also provides children with an interactive way to learn about the new skill because they're able to come up and interact with the pieces as we're talking about um, this math, the math concept. Each math concept repeats throughout the lessons to give children plenty of time to practice and form a deep understanding of each math concept. And then each math concept also scaffolds on the prior lessons so that young children can build deep foundations of their early Math in each skills. unit, children will be given the opportunity to learn about number operations, which includes numbers and relationships, the development of counting skills, the understanding of quantities, recognizing order relations, which one has more, fewer, or less, and a basic understanding of adding and taking away. It's also going to include geometry. So in the geometry skills, they're going to be studying of shapes and spatial relationships, the children's ability to identify, describe, and construct different shapes, and to identify and label positions in space. They'll also be given the opportunities to practice patterns in algebra, which would include development of algebraic thinking and reasoning, the ability to sort, group, and classify objects by some attribute, and to recognize, extend, and create patterns. We'll also be able to talk about measurement and time, which would include comparing, ordering, and measuring things. The ability to compare and order objects by length, height, weight, or capacity. To use comparison vocabulary and to begin to measure. So all of those things are going to be included in each unit. And like I said, it's going to be broken down to where they have plenty of opportunities to practice each skill. So what would, would that kind of look like? So here you can see um, the two months. So this would be unit one and unit two. As you look at the pacing guide, you will see that each concept is repeated three to four times to give plenty of opportunity to use and practice each skill. Let's take a look at what this would look like. So I want to kind of walk you through at each step of, of a lesson that they get plenty of practice at that skill. So let me kind of walk you through what that would look like.
Here would be the first lesson on introducing your kids to top, middle, and bottom, those concept words that they can do. So this is what the pocket chart would look like. So here would be what the pocket chart looks like. It's going to be the house and then it has these pieces down here at the bottom. And you're going to be able to, whether you want to start out and, and say, okay, like I did the lesson of like, what is this? And they're like, it's a kitty cat. And I'd go, what kind of kitty cat is it? And they were like, it's an orange kitty cat. So that we could identify with each piece. And we did that for all of the pieces for like the mice and the um, cats. And then at first I just put, um, uh, the cat here and I asked him where is the orange cat and then they would you know tell you it's at the top it's you know at the bottom and then I would do the same thing where is the brown mouse it's at the you know bottom and then after we've done that a few times where they were able to practice it, then I would invite children to come up and say, you know, can you put the white mouse at, in, at the top of the house or in the top window? And they would come up and do that. And then I would just kind of go through and let several kids have um, their their turn to be able to do that you know and I don't I can't have all the kids have a turn on one day because I have too many kids so I do do the sticks where they know everybody's going to get a turn throughout the week to be able to come up and and be able to do the pocket chart with us so that would be the first lesson on top middle and bottom and then as you go over here I the next lesson that's going to you know give them another another opportunity to practice it in a different way so you know the cars at the top of the hill the cars in the middle of the hill and the cars at the bottom so there again the pocket chart is going to look like this where you have where you have the scene here and then here's going to be the pieces at the bottom and they're going to be able to as you ask them can you put the yellow truck at the bottom of the hill they're able to come up and do that can you put the red truck at the top of the hill and they're going to be able to come up and do that as well so it just gives them different opportunities to use those same words those same math concepts but in different ways and then the final lesson on top middle and bottom is going to be where they can build a burger so you have your hamburger bun at the bottom and then you're asking them let's put the meat on the top or in between and then what goes on top of the cheese could be the tomato or you know and then up here you're going to be able to put the buns so you're going to be able to use lots of different vocabulary of can you put like if you have the lettuce here you could say can you put the tomato you know at the under the lettuce so you have this is your top all of this is in the middle and this is your bottom so as you're building the burger they know they have to have a bottom they have to have everything in the middle of their bun, and then they have to have the top of their bun. So it's just giving them another opportunity to practice those skills. And then here is a glance at each. Each unit comes with weekly lessons for you to be able to do in regards to the pocket chart. And it's kind of broken down to you where you have, you know, your objective or your learning um, skill that you're trying to teach and then the materials that you'll need from out through the unit. And then here's kind of a sample of what that might look like for the pocket chart. So it's kind of easy for the teachers to be able to find the pieces or set up the pocket chart before the children come in. And then it also has, I've also included um, in each unit a weekly lesson to extend children's learning. These activities can be used during center time or as a small group lesson. So I kind of wanted to show you, walk you through a couple more of the pocket charts where you can see me kind of use and move the pieces along versus um, here in the screenshots. So I'm gonna stop here for a second and I'm gonna turn the camera around so that I can kind of show you what it would look like in the pocket chart. Okay, so here behind me, I have my pocket chart all set up and it says, can you sort the buttons? Small, medium, and large. And then down here, I have all of the buttons that they can come up and sort. So after we've talked about what big looks like or what small, medium, and large look like, then they're able to come up and have the opportunity to move each of the buttons around. So here I'll pull out all the triangles so you can kind of see. So each button set has 
the three different sizes for them to be able to come up and sort the, the shapes or sort the buttons by size. So you would have the large, then the medium, and the small. And they have plenty of opportunities to be able to come up and do that. So then here's the same sizes there. And I try to make it where each size is very similar to one another so that it's not hard for them to recognize the small, medium, and large. So there again, they can go large, small, medium. And they don't have to pick out the same shapes. They can just come up here and pick one out and go, oh, this one is small. This one is large. And um, here at home, I only have one pocket chart, but I have my pocket chart at, at school where it's a longer one and a little bit bigger one, so they have a little bit more room. This is a real small pocket chart that I have here at home just for space, you know, size that I have at home. So, um, and I'm going to pause right here because I want to walk you through another one so that you can kind of see Now, this lesson behind me is going to be more in regards to a lesson in regards to over and under. So, we've talked about it prior to this pocket chart that I'm showing you here. Prior, we talked about airplanes flying above clouds and under clouds. So, now I wanted to give them another opportunity to practice that same concept but in a different way so it gives them that really deep understanding of that math concept that I'm trying to teach them. So here is another way for over and under. So here was the cards that we have of what under looks like. So the plane is under the cloud. And then we talked about how the plane is over the cloud. And then in that lesson, they got to practice moving the plane around over and under. So in this lesson, we're talking about here's a giraffe and where is the bee? So is the bee under the giraffe? Or is it maybe over the giraffe? So they can place it. Is it under his head? Under. Or could it be over his head? Over. So it gives them different ways that they can use the word um, under and over. So that was another lesson. See how I mean? It's just kind of really simple. It's quick. It's just a great visual for them to be able to go, oh, okay, I understand. So that's one. And I'm going to show you one more from a week's lesson. So this is one week that I'm kind of breaking down. Now in this it. lesson for the day would be how to count in order. So it says how many pumpkins did the farmer pick? So we have our farmer and then I have the pumpkin cards. So these ones don't have the numbers on it and we're just getting them to count in order. So I might put up, I'll go, I'll go now close your eyes. I want to try to surprise you. Let's see how many pumpkins did the did the farmer pick? And I'll stand in front of the chart so they can't see it and I'll put up some pumpkins. And then when they they I move away and they'll go, okay, now how many pumpkins did the farmer pick? And they're able to count one, two, three, four. And I might invite one of the children up to come up and count them for me. And in this one, I only went up to 10, so there's 10 pumpkins. But if you wanted to have it a little bit different and scaffold it where the children need to maybe put them in order. I also have included the pumpkins that have the numbers on them so that you could put the pumpkins down here at the bottom and then invite one of your children up that you're wanting to maybe, you know, that's a little bit more advanced to give them opportunities as well to come up and see if they could put the pumpkins in order by this and then they can all count them together. So one, two, three, four, five. And it goes up to 10 there again, too. So there's two different ways that you could use this one based on your little learners. So I hope this was helpful to you. Um, I hope you've kind of liked the concept as much as I'm enjoying it in our classroom. And like I said at the introduction of it, um, it's something that I just kind of stumbled upon and was like, oh, you know, I was trying to introduce something that I needed to do in my lesson. And I was like, oh, how am I gonna, you know, get them to understand this idea. So I created a, 
a thing for the pocket chart and then as I realized that they were going back into the classroom during work time and using that new skill um, during their play it was like wow I need to really be a lot more intentional about how I'm introducing these concepts to my kids so I hope you enjoyed it thank you for joining me um, please leave a comment below if you'd like to see more videos like this on my TPT store um, until next time, thanks.